Hello there. We're back. And this is, uh, I probably said the last video, but this is going to be one of the last videos of this year. And here's the last things I've got done ever since I went on break on the 14th. Uh, I've been working on Minecraft and playing some other games, but here we are in this world. And you can see that this looks a bit different and it's a bit laggy, apparently, somehow. How am I getting such low frames? Ah, uh, whatever. You can still hear me and that's fine. So this is what, this is what it looks like now when you enter a uh, pace. Gosh, so laggy. Um, let's turn off all particles. I mean, as most particles. Minimum lighting. Number of levels all the way down. Well, hopefully the game didn't crash. Okay, so I might have crashed. I don't know, but if we can get out of this, yeah, okay, then uh, I'll be able to show you. Okay, well then, frame rate didn't improve that much. It just doubled the frame rate a little bit, but this is what happens when you walk in. Um, I now have a prismarine, a cooked fish, and a prismarine shard or crystal. This is the shard chest. And uh, you might have seen this in live stream, the previous live stream. But uh, we've got these things where they eject what's ever in the dispenser out into a ice water stream so that it, it gets collected over there. We'll show you that again as well. You don't need to put it in subtraction mode. It just, uh, I just did it um, for funds. Well, we're just gonna put it back. So what it does is that it, uh, it ejects. Um, we need to have the repeater here or else this will burn out. So get a repeater, one plus tick over here. It continues the clock, but then it also goes to here, uh, which is um, powered by quasi-connectivity uh, since the redstone powers this block which uh, turn powers this block this block and this block somehow <laughs> so that's how quasi-connectivity works and it only applies in Java version and I did it did it to all other water streams um, all other cells and I'm not using this as an experience farm and you can see there's tons of hoppers over here um, they go into double chests, which uh, which take away um, equally, except for the fact that it doesn't take away equally, because there's barely, there's never really a time where there's two items in the chest at once, because these two hoppers will pull real fast before this hopper um, allows one to pass through. So it has a bias. So this um, this fills up first. This fills up second. Um, so this one fills up first. Uh, as you can see, there's really nothing else in these two chests because they're filling up on this side. And yeah, <laughs> that's it for that. We have, um, we have it flowing into a soul sand stream that goes up. Uh, oops, well, at least it's a glass, so I just clip into the block. Um, which just filters, um, separately into a line here that goes into a comparator comparator item collector sorter so we got that and there's one thing that's off about this is that sometimes the guardians will spawn in here because it's inside the base but uh we don't need to, um we don't need to do anything because it's it's really rare it's like one guardian per like a <laughs> couple hours so and this thing is like killing four guardians every like five seconds or something or 15 seconds so it really doesn't matter and then I decided to build some farms around here 
So we got a um, we got uh, four different types of crops farm and three nether warts. So why do we need the nether warts? It's because I want to um, get red uh, red nether bricks. So that's why I did three of three of the cells and just four regular crops that harvest each one. And this is just a melon and pumpkin farm, an automatic melon and pumpkin farm. And I'll show the I'll show the redstone for this first. So we'll go all the way up here. This is not really efficient. Uh, I would actually uh, bring this block one more out because uh, the velocity that these guys have uh, continue when falling. Uh, it's called momentum <laughs> and uh, it land on the glass pane sometimes but I pick it up all the time when I'm uh, when I'm harvesting so it's really not that big of a deal but every row is essentially like this it has some uh, redstone torch under it but it continues off in the in the next row which um, you see the torch always goes on this block then it goes all the way and unpowers the torch on the other end and that's where we use to send the signal up and down here is the first thing this goes into a torch tower that starts from the block and uses a repeater to go down there doesn't need a repeater um actually yeah it doesn't need the repeater because there's a redstone torch on the other side of this block which would continually power this uh this even if i activated the farm i'm gonna show off the farm working in a second after we get the melons all uh, set it up. So observers detect the change uh, in form when it when it connects to when it's uh, when the stem connects to a fully grown plant. So that that redstone uh, that redstone signal powers every piece of redstone down here. It's not as efficient as you want it to be, but it means that I only use one uh, two blocks of height. Uh, so that's how that's how we're doing it right now and we have these walls to prevent it from going off on the side I will have walls to that farm as well uh, on the front and also this is the cactus farm right here you can already see this working this is auto also an automatic ca uh, cactus farm so we got tons of cactus right there so it's being held by string that is right next to the cactus block right there, which holds up the sand. And we do it in planes, uh, because if we did it every single plane, then uh, <laughs> then all cactus will fall onto every other cactus. So yeah, that's not a good design, but we got this. And I think it's the one Mumble Jumbo showed in his videos. Um, yeah, it's pretty efficient. Um, and this is the one I got just got finished working on today. It used to be a tree farm uh, that I probably showed. I think I showed it in the stream at the end, uh, but this is not actually supposed to be a tree farm. It's supposed to be a cocoa bean farm. And right now it's almost all fully grown. So this is what happens. We have it go through a monostable circuit, which sends out a one tick pulse uh, up to here. I hope this could throw okay good which sends up to here and I don't use an observer because I don't remember how to use an observer <laughs> in this situation because it always repowers itself as the piston goes down but we just have a constant redstone signal being detected um, being sent out through a peer that goes to a block and it's not being powered right now because there's no block right there but when there's a block there um, it powers this redstone dust which then goes up here and powers up this line this line and this line and it needs an extra tick so that it doesn't uh, so it all syncs up uh, correctly and yeah we got that it's a very simple redstone and the payoff for the farm might be great uh, we also have this um, this is just a simple minecart vader minecart elevator up here I uh, haven't done anything with uh, that stuff but, uh, let's just go down here into the water vader and yeah I completely filled all this with uh, 
with gray glass. So it looks pretty cool down here. That is where I'm getting all my lava for smelting. I've been AFK here for a while. And this is the um, Cave Survivor farm. I don't need to put any walls here uh, because they they drop down really fast. Like they have no time to grab onto any walls. And if it did have walls, they would have time to grab onto the walls and climb up, which would not let them kill themselves <laughs> real nicely. So they die of fall damage. You stand up here. You stand up here. Flick the lever if you wanna um, if you wanna turn on all the redstone lag la lamps and. Yeah, that's it. Um, these slimes come from the, um, the places because this is all like underneath uh, below level 40. So slimes can spawn. And yeah, well, I'll show the farms working at the end. They go up here. And now this is a kelp farm. Now, this is the first thing I actually built around here. Um, I built the other farms because I was bored. And I thought, hey, let's make this a farming place. So we have a kelp farm that goes real far. It's eight block this way and eight blocks this way uh, with one block in the center for the hoppers because that's how the water streams go. And let me tell you, it's a pain to get this thing um, how it is. So I used the same design, the same sandstone pillars and gray glass everywhere. So the observer line detects a plant growing at level 12. And that is the minimum level uh, for it to grow. And then it goes into here, um, a redstone line that gets detected by a bunch of observers that bring the line down and flicks on this iron trap door. Now, this is a flying machine supported by the iron trap, um, trap door. So when it activates, um, the flying machine moves out. And we have lots of, lots of obsidian over here, so I don't build anything that uh, that can attach to the slab blocks. And we also have this for obsidian as well. I don't build anything like that. There used to be a row of seaweed here, kelp, but uh, I chose not to put anything there because uh, it would just get stuck underneath. And a lot of these, a lot of it does get stuck under it, under it, but it's a good it's a good compromise. Now we have a dropper here. Then um, you see this observer, it detects when the flying machine comes in. And then it sends a signal uh, into the dropper, which uh, needs to be set at four ticks, or else the, um, the flying machine would kind of break. Um, because it's trying to detect uh, multiple signals at one time when it can detect. So it just um, the observer faces downward uh, for the flying machines all the time, so it's looking at this dropper, and the the flying machine stops. First off, that's that's what needs to happen, and the dropper uh, activates, and then it goes back. So that's the whole system there. It's from Nembomb. Uh, it's a pretty simple system, but it it's really effective, especially underwater where uh, redstone can get destroyed real easily. So that's it. Um, this is going to be a part for a sugarcane farm. And this is going to be a part for a, for a chorus plant farm. Now, I say, uh, you can't really make an automatic chorus land farm. Yeah, like the, like the farmland over there. Uh, like this, like this module. Uh, this farmland can't really be automatic without any villagers, and it can't um, we can't farm nether uh, automatically as well. So this is why I made the the seven stage system, and also for the cocoa beans, you have to plant them manually. You can't nothing can plant them by itself. So the chorus farm is going to use the the trident or arrows, and the thing about that is that we can build a great trees and then we're going to make a water stream flush all of it after we get all the all the chlorous flowers out now how does this work this is a new feature in 1.14 uh, that we're going to get where you can where arrows and tridents or any projectile uh, can knock down coarse flowers so you don't have to pillar up and stack every single time and that's what we're going to use 
after we knock out all the coarse flowers, um, we're gonna make a flushing system that flushes all the all the plants, all the all the flowers and all the all the fruit into a hopper line, and that's why it's the same size as the other one. And we're gonna make a sugarcane farm the same size as this, uh, but the main the the hardest part is gonna be, or the most time consuming part is, um, digging out all of this. So. Yeah, that's really that's really it for everything. We're gonna show you how the uh, cocoa bean farm works. So, so <laughs> you probably couldn't see that, but uh, it was really quick, and it brought all the logs back down, and that's what we wanted. So, I actually don't know how much is flowing in here. Okay, and this is why we need the um, we need the front to be covered because. Uh, the, as you saw, a cocoa bean just landed there, and I don't think any cocoa bean landed in the back, which is good because that means it just traveled through a wall, which sucks for me. Okay, that's a lot of cocoa beans. We started out with a stack and a stack and six, and we got that much, so that's a good thing. Um, and this is how this farm works. I could I could make it set on the timer where uh, it knows when everything's flushed down and then um, everything's flushed down and then uh, what's it called it uh, re it stops the water streams from flowing. Oh, I also didn't show you, but the water streams are also held back by trap doors, which is easily the most inexpensive thing here. And as you can see, um, a lot of the items actually flew out onto here, which is why I wanted to change this. Um, into a more bulky block design but who cares we're gonna get more efficiency out of it and I don't have to go around collecting it all the time so yeah that's oh yeah forgot another thing that I had that you probably that you never saw you would never see because this was a while ago I had a bunch of furnaces down below um, using using uh, lava buckets and uh, that's that's what got me through a lot of um, a lot of this. So the kelp um, from that hopper stream feeds into this, and it's always being smelted by its own kelp blocks. And I just I just go here and um, craft up kelp blocks. And what is in that gain from this? It's always um, eleven. Yeah. 11 kelp so you get more than half of what you put in which is which is great in my books <laughs> I don't know about yours but this is very helpful because all these furnaces if you want to if you want to smelt one stack of items about one stack it's three blocks and how much does a stack of uh, a stack of uh, what's it called kelp get you a stack of dried kelp gets you about um, seven blocks so yeah this is really efficient it's more than half like I said and now we're getting to a point where we actually have a bit too much and after that we could just use it anywhere we want and I just filled it up so we got that and it's going to take a long time to replant all of this because that, that is technically the longest time spent is that even though you build all of this it might have taken an hour or two um but technically every build took me about like 30 minutes to build but uh but this time you spent doing this is time gained by uh not having to go through the generic methods and i think that's a really good time saver so is what we got. I, I don't think we'll keep going with this style of farm uh, because I want to be able to plant co uh, to plant these seeds without having to uh, plant these beans without having to uh, jump on them because I, I can't reach all the way over there. So I might have to build in a ladder and take out two rows, I mean two columns, but uh, I think it'd be worth it. So yeah, that's going to be it for this episode of um, the Prismarine base tour. Sorry, it's so laggy. But uh, if you got 
if you got through listening to everything here. Um, I think, um, oh, sorry, I just realized that the audio was really low in, uh, yeah, the audio was really low in the recording, but, uh, except for my voice, so, yeah, everything's working, everything's fine, uh, the sugarcane and the course run farms are going to take the longest time because we have to clear water, but, well, everything's coming together, and we're going to have lots of resources by the end of it. Uh, so, see you guys in the next uh, little episode, probably next year, and bye-bye. Gotcha.